This is the review for the chapter four quiz one. This covers sections four one, four two, four three, four four day one, and four four day two. So in the first um, bunch of questions, you have to either say yes or no, whether something is a function. In questions one, two, and three, remember that it is a no if there are two dots right directly above each other. If there's two dots right directly above each other, it is a no. They could be really close together or they could be far apart, but if they are directly above each other, then it is a no. Go ahead and try one, two, and three, please. When you have a picture of a solid line, remember there are dots all along the solid line. Even in question number three, when it's a squiggly line, there are really dots all along that squiggly line. So when we take a look at question number one, are there dots right directly above each other? Yes, there are. That makes number one a no, because there's two dots right directly above each other. In question number two, following those dots, there are not two dots directly above each other. That makes number two a yes. In question number three, following the squiggly line, are the, is there anywhere where there's two dots directly above each other? No, there's not. That makes number three a yes. So it is only a no when there's two dots directly above each other. When we take a look at four and five, remember that all points are written X comma Y. So your first number is an X, your second number is a Y. If there are two X values that are the same, then your answer is no. If all of your X values are different, then your answer is yes. Go ahead and try four and five, please. If there's two X values that are the same, it's a no. So honestly, in these questions, you don't even need to look at your Y values. You could actually go through and cross out all of your Y values, don't care about them at all. So we have a zero, we have a two, we have a four, we have a six. All of them are different. When all of them are different, your answer is yes. In question number five, notice that I have a five and a five. Since I have two X values the same, our answer is no. So if you have two X values the same, it's a no. Take a look at six and seven. In six and seven, your first oval is your X, your second oval is your Y. If we have, if we're using an X value twice, if we're using an X value twice, that's when it is a no. Well, what does that mean using it twice? If we have an X value and we have two arrows coming out of the X value, that's when it is a no. Go ahead and try six and seven, please. So looking at your X values, the zero is being used once, but this two, notice that the two has two arrows coming out of it. Since that two is being used twice, we have two, three and two, five. Since this is being, please don't write on my screen, please don't write on my screen. 
Um, this is being used twice, so this is a no. In number seven, this three is being used once, the five is being used once, the seven is being used once, the nine is being used once. Everyone is only being used one time, so this is a yes. In questions eight and nine, um, can you get rid of that from my screen, please? Um, in questions eight and nine, um, if you use an if you use an x value twice, it is a no. If you use an x value twice, it is a no. Go ahead and try eight and nine, please. So in these two, you're not looking at your Y values at all. All we're looking at are our X's. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of them are different. So number eight is a yes. In question number nine, you have a zero and a zero. You have two X values that are the same. Therefore, number nine is no. So that's what your first nine questions will look like on your quiz, just yeses and nos. In 10 and 11, what you have to do, this comes from section 4-2, what you have to do is you have to take this number that's inside parentheses and sub it in for X. Take this number inside parentheses and sub it in for X. So when we take a look at this one, this one says negative two, times whatever your X value is, minus one. This one says four minus two times whatever your X value is. You could just take those and type them right into the calculator. Go ahead and try 10 and 11, please. In number 10, you would have negative two times seven minus one. You could just type it right into the calculator exactly how it is. Now, if you're trying to do this in your head, one quick reminder, you have to follow order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, PEMDAS, however you wanna think about it. You would have to do the multiplying first before you do any adding or subtracting. So negative two times seven is negative 14. Minus one is negative 15. In the second question, four minus two times negative six. You could just type it right into the calculator exactly how it is. Or if you go to do it inside your head, you have to do the multiplying first. Negative two times negative six is positive 12. Four plus 12 is positive 16. So all that you're doing is taking that number and subbing it in for X. Now, the next set of questions is exactly like that, except you have more than one thing to sub in, right? We wanna take all of our X values this time and sub them in for X. Take all of your X values this time and sub them in for X. Now be careful on that second one. Negative X. Negative X really means, remember, whenever you have a letter all by itself, that really means that there's a one in front of it. So this is really negative one times X and then plus seven. Go ahead and try 12 and 13, please. This one's going to take you a minute because you got to do a couple different calculations. Again, you could type them right into the calculator.
and give you about 20 more seconds or so. So you're taking these numbers and subbing them in for X. So you have three times negative five plus two, three times negative three plus two, three times negative one plus two, three times one plus two, three times three plus two. So you should end up with negative 13, negative seven, negative one, five, and 11. For number 13, we have negative one, times each of these numbers and then plus seven. If you're somebody who's trying to do these in your head, please remember that a negative times a negative is a positive. So what you should have gotten was 11, nine, two, one, and negative three. So you'll have questions that look just like that on your quiz. In the next ones. Now, these ones are gonna take a little bit uh, a little bit longer to do, all right? You have to do these just like you did the questions back in 3-1, chapter three, the very first section. The only difference is that these say f of x instead of y, but you're gonna do them the same exact way. You are going to take your x values, zero, one, and two, and sub them in for x. So in this first one, Instead of four times X minus five, you're gonna have four times zero minus five. Instead of four times X minus five, we're gonna have four times one minus five. Instead of four times X minus five, you're gonna have four times two minus five. Whatever your answer is, goes in the F of X or Y column. So it goes right here. When you go to graph your points, your X value is how many we go over. Your Y value or F of X value is how many you go up or down. Now, remember when you graph points, we always have to start right here in the middle. We start at zero, zero, and then we go over and then up or down. When you go to do this third part, remember that what you're doing is you're subbing in these numbers for X and Y into your original equation. If it checks, then your answer is yes. If it doesn't check, which means that the numbers don't match, then your answer is no. So go ahead and try number 14, please. Go ahead and try number 14, please. Four times zero is zero, minus five is negative five. Four times one is four, minus five is negative one. Four times two is eight, minus five is three. When we go to graph it, zero, negative five, starting in the middle at the purple dot, we're going over zero, down to negative five. One, negative one, starting in the middle, over to one, 
down to negative one, two, three, starting in the middle over to two, up to three. Remember that when you graph your three points, they should always form a straight line. If you get some sort of weird shape or some sort of V shape or check mark shape, you did something wrong. They always have to form a straight line. Connect your dots, put arrows on the ends, and you should label your line. For the third part, 515, we want to know is this point on this line? Well, the only way to figure it out is to take it and sub it in to our original equation. So instead of y equals, we're going to have 15 equals. Instead of 4 times x, we're going to have 4 times 5 minus 5. You could take this part and type it right into the calculator. 4 times 5 minus 5, that gives you 15. Well, we have a matching answer here, 15 equals 15. Anytime that it is a matching answer, that is a yes. Take a look at number 15, please. In number 15, we're gonna choose zero, two, and four. Those numbers will be already chosen for you. For one half, one half is really 0 0.5 when we change a fraction into a decimal doing top divided by bottom. So you're gonna have 0 0.5 times zero plus four. You're gonna have 0 0.5 times two plus four. And then you're gonna have 0 0.5 times four plus four. Remember that if you don't like using the dot, sometimes they put these numbers for our X values inside parentheses as well. It works the same way. That still means times. I'm doing go ahead one. and go ahead and try the rest of this one on your own, please. Zero point five times zero is zero plus four. <coughs> excuse me, is four. Bless you. Zero point five times two is one plus four is five. Zero point five times four is two plus four is six. So when we go to graph it, we start at this purple dot in the middle, over zero, up to four. Start at the purple dot in the middle, over to two up to five. Start at the purple dot in the middle, over to four, up to six. Connect the dots, put your arrows, and you should always label your line. So when we go to do the second part, or the third part rather, um, we need to take this 10 and 11 and sub them in. We need to sub the 10 into here, we need to sub the 11 in for here for y. 
So instead of y equals, we have 11 equals. Instead of 0 0.5 times x, we have 0 0.5 times 10. You could take this part and type it right into the calculator. 0 0.5 times 10 plus 4 is 9. Does 11 equal 9? No, it doesn't. Anytime that those two numbers don't match, then your answer is a no. Now, the last type of questions come from 4 4, day one and day two. What you have to do is you have to find the two missing numbers in the table. We have to write the rule. Now, taking a look at these three particular questions, Notice that our X value is counting by ones. Our X value is counting by ones. Our X value is counting by ones. If your X value is counting by ones, you don't have to use subtract, subtract, divide. You can, if you want to, you can use subtract, subtract, divide for every single question, if you want to. Now, what the heck am I talking about with subtract, subtract, divide? Well, you can use that to find the number that goes in front of your X. So you can use subtract, subtract, divide, if you want to, or since our X column is going by ones, and only because our X column is going by ones, the number that's in front of your X is just the pattern going down the Y column. So if we were adding by five each time, we put a five in front of the X. We are subtracting by one each time, we put a negative one in front of the X. Now that only works when our X column goes by ones. In the next set of questions, the X column is gonna go by twos or threes, so we have to use subtract, subtract, divide. For your plus or minus after your X, for your plus or minus after the X, it is your Y value when X equals zero. It is your Y value when X equals zero. How do you find the numbers in the green? You just gotta continue on with the pattern. So let me do this first one for you. All right, let me do this first one for you. So in this first one, we have negative 10, negative seven, negative four, negative one. What are we doing each time? We're adding by three. Since we're adding by three, a three goes in front of your X. If we're adding by three, negative one plus three is two. Two plus three is five. To get your plus or minus after your x, when x equals zero, y is negative 10. So you have a minus 10 right there. Go ahead and try 17 and 18, please. Go ahead and try 17 and 18, please. Can I give you about 20 more seconds or so? Taking a look at number 17, going down the Y column, four, six, eight, 10. We are adding by two. 
each time. So two goes in front of our X. If we're adding going down, that means we are subtracting going up. So four minus two is two. Two minus two is zero for your missing numbers in the table. For our plus or minus, it's when X equals zero, whatever your Y value is. So when X equals zero, Y is two. So we have a plus two here. In number 18, going down the Y column is the same thing as going to the right. So how do you get from six to 11? Well, we're adding by five. If we keep on adding by five, we would have 16 and 21. Um, when X equals zero, when X equals zero, Y is 16. So we have a plus 16 here. Now those were done when the X column was going by ones. The next set of problems doesn't have the X column going by ones. The X columns here are going by twos or by threes or by twos. When the X column goes by something other than ones, you have to use subtract, subtract, divide. Subtract going up the Y column, subtract going up the X column, and then divide your Y answer divided by your X answer. Whatever you get for that is the number that goes in front of your X in your, in your rule. The way that you find the missing numbers in the table works the same exact way as it did before. The way that you find your plus or minus works the same way that it did before. So let's take a look at these. The pattern going, I'm gonna do this first one for you, then you're gonna try the other two. Going down the Y column, one, nine, 17. What we're doing is adding by eight each time. So 17 plus eight is 25. 25 plus eight gives me 33. Now, we need to use subtract, subtract, divide to find the number in front of the X. We're not just putting eight there. Eight is wrong because our X column goes by twos. Choose two numbers in your Y. Choose two numbers in your X. Subtract going up the Y. So I would have nine minus one. Nine minus one is eight. Subtract going up the X. Two minus zero. Two minus zero is two. And now divide. Eight divided by two gives me four. Four is the number that goes in front of our X. The way that you find your plus or minus is when X equals zero, whatever your, plus, whatever your Y value is. So that's found the same exact way. It is a plus one. Go ahead and try 20 and 21, please.
so in number 20, all right, in number 20, to get this number that's in front of the X, we have to use subtract, subtract, divide. But first, I want to find the missing numbers in my table here in the green. 6, 18, 30, 42. What we're doing each time is adding by 12. So 42 plus 12 is 54. 54 plus 12 is 66. Subtract, subtract, divide. So choose two numbers in your X, two numbers in your Y. 18 minus 6. 18 minus 6 is 12. 3 minus 0. 3 minus 0 is 3. And now we want to divide. 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 is the number that goes in front of your X. When X equals 0, Y is 6. So you should have a plus 6 here. In number 21, um, going to the right, we are subtracting by 2. So going to the left, we would be adding by 2. So negative 4 and negative 2. Unfortunately, in this one, we do have to use some negative numbers. I try to avoid them most of the time. Subtracting going up the x, we would have negative 4 minus negative 2. Negative 4 minus negative 2 is negative 2. Going up the x, we have 2 minus 0. 2 minus 0 is 2. And now you have to divide. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. That's the number that goes in front of your x. When x equals 0, y is negative 2. So you have a minus 2 here. And those are what your quiz questions look like.